I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Hey, today is Friday, praise God. Now, I remember I, I said I was going to continue what I was sharing with you yesterday because before our, before our time was up. Now, before we go into that, can we call for that daily bread? Praise God. Are you ready? Say this with me. Say, Father, I receive now my daily bread for today. It's coming in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. And Father, we just thank you for today's broadcast. Open our understanding that we may learn of you. And our faith will become strong. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I was telling you yesterday that, you know, sometimes it's difficult for a, a, a prophet you know, to prophesy concerning his own affairs. Very difficult many times. Or, or sometimes, you know, he, 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 he sees, you know, when you meet a seer, he sees for many people, but he, he doesn't see. You know, you know, sometimes you find situations where you say, um, how come he, he's seeing for everybody, but what happened under his nose? You know, it, 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 it's amazing. You, you see this happen many times, you see. He said, this man is a man of God. He sees things. God shows him things. But something bad, something wrong was happening under his nose. And he didn't see it. I'll tell you why. And, and I'll tell you how to deal with that, you know, as, as a prophet of God also. Now, not because God doesn't show him those things. But many times, it is his own self that finds it um, difficult to believe God, see, where this his own is concerned. Now, I was telling yesterday, you know, like he said, don't get too close to the prophet because it might interfere with his um, uh, reception with you, it might interfere. Now, so not because God doesn't, uh, uh, you're close to your prophet, for example, and this man hears God, he, he, he sees things. But you are with him. And people from far and near will come. And he said, does say the Lord to you. And then, you know, he begins to tell them things. They're like, whoa, whoa. And then you'll see me. I'm, I'm, I'm having issues. And this man cannot say anything. This man is not saying anything. And he can even go to him and say, ah, man of God, I, I need your help. I, I don't know what God is saying. And he's like, mm, pray, just pray, pray. God will surely speak to you, pray. You are telling others what God is saying. And you are telling me to go pray. I'll tell you what's going on. Not because God doesn't speak where you are concerned. But you see, he has too much knowledge of you that interferes with the thoughts of God when it comes to him. Now, as a prophet, how do you deal with this? Because... Now, this other person, when you say, does say the Lord to you, they are quick to believe, they are quick to take it. But this one that is very, very close, you usually will not say, does say the Lord to you. Now, it is expected that this person that is working closely with you should have the kind of ears that hear. Now, <laughs> you, you, you are working together, for example, and then, you can just say, go get this, because that's how the word of God comes. It just comes like that. He just he said, hey, go, go do this and this. And then the person goes, ah. mm. he doesn't know that the word of God has come concerning him. Now, he, he is there. He sees outside and said, ah, sir, um, I, I'm asking, hey, stop, before you say anything. This is what the Lord is saying concerning you. Go and do this, go and do this, go and do this, go and do this. And then this fellow is like, whoa, wow. 
and he didn't know it. But you know the truth. You tell this one says, "Hey, go and do this. Go and do this." He takes it lightly because if he, ah, maybe because you know that I'm going through this situation. That's why he's telling me to go. There. You see the problem. So it's not the problem of the prophet. It is you, the receiver. The same thing with his family members. Now, how you how you handle? Cases like that, your family members and people that are very, very close. I mean, people that are really, really close. So you know almost everything about them. Of course, as much as they tell you. How, how do you affect their lives possibly? You affect their lives possibly by the counsel you give, number one. And number two, by the way you live amongst them. See? So, now, you, for example, your household now as a child of God, as a prophet of God, beyond blessing the people, you must be go before the Lord to receive instructions concerning your household. And then pray that you have a wife who believes in you and will carry out the instructions you give. Now, when, when, when you do that, you realize something. You may not be telling your household, thus say the Lord, thus say the Lord, but their lives will just be advancing and they will just be doing good, they will just be doing better. Because they believe the words that you speak. But the moment they begin to despise the words that you speak. And you come and say, hey, from today, in this house, everybody will be praying from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, that might just be an instruction that came from the Holy Spirit. The smart wife, for example, will pick it and say, okay, that means God wants to do something new. Hey, children. He heard what daddy said. Yes. Yes, mommy. Yes, daddy. Set your alarm. Wake you up. We'll pray at this time. Now, as long as they follow those instructions, it shall be well with them. Because, at least as a prophet, don't minister to outsiders and forget to bless your own household. The Bible spoke about David when he was done celebrating after they brought the ark. When he was done celebrating, he went back home to bless his household. You remember the story? Hey, that was when um, um, his, his wife, Saul's daughter, protested and said, you, you that was dancing like uh, and opening all your legs for the, the maidens of Israel to see, see what is not their own. And then David said, huh? You, you are questioning my dancing? God made me king instead of your father. Don't you understand? I didn't fight for this throne. And the Bible said she was barren. Now, David didn't say you'll be barren. But you see, she was barren because her attitude, she, she disdained the things of God. She didn't understand the things of God at all. So she mocked it, mocked it. And she carried barrenness for that. And David couldn't do anything about it. And you know the whole story about her life. Now, listen. So David went back home to bless his household. So don't finish ministering to people and think ministry is over. You're done with the service. When you go back home, bless your household. Carry them in your heart. Say, Father, thank you for what happened in service today. And then, Father, I bless my house. Holy Spirit, I receive instructions from you concerning my house and concerning how we live. Now, when it comes to decision making in your house, trust the Holy Spirit. You are not a preacher alone. You are a child of God also. So the same way people depend on you for the anointing, you must learn to receive the anointing for your own self and, and be a blessing to everyone. But the blessing you are to them may not be the same way in, in operation with other people outside. But you must learn there is no way God is going to use you and not consider your house. But you as a prophet, as a minister, can become a blockage. See? It can become a blockage. So you bless the people, but then you don't let that anointing flow into your house. 
How will the anointing flow into your house? It's not the same anointing you use outside. The anointing that works in your house will be the wisdom and the teachings of the anointing upon your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, others come to you, they receive and they are blessed. Then you turn inside your house, the real you shows. And, and what's going to bless your house is your personality now. So if you're not humble before the Lord, you know, you go back and say, Lord, I was hearing those things I shared today for the first time. Wow, thank you. What, what was the wisdom behind this thing that and he begins to tell you that, whoa. And then you begin to share this same thing with your household. You share with him and say, wow, you know the truth. This is what the Lord was telling me. This is what the Lord. Now, in that sharing, in that communication, there's a transference of blessing. There's a transference of grace. There's a transference of anointing. Don't ever assume that, oh, they are children. They will not understand. Come on now. Come on. Paul spoke about Timothy. He said, how that from a little child you have known the Holy Scriptures. Jesus said, let the children come. Don't stop them. The testimony you carry, the anointing you carry will bless you as a person. Now, because people don't understand this, they, they, they turn around to make merchandise of the anointing upon their lives. Now, because they, they, they prophesy into people's lives, people come back with testimony and say, Pastor, after that service, after that prophecy, I went home and I got a call and I got into one mega business that, man, Pastor, I'm into millions right now. I say, whoa. And then Pastor, look at his life. He's in poverty. And then the people who are coming to testify, they are not coming with anything. You know, they, are not coming, they are not coming with money to say, Pastor, I came to say thank you. And soon the pastor begins to think, say, can you imagine? All these people, after blessing them, they go. In fact, they go and give the money to other great men of God, you know, in quotes. I say, from now on, if I prophesy, you must drop a seed. <laughs> Things have happened like that. I've had pastors confess that to me. I said, no, see, you see, you have a problem. You had a problem. You had a problem, or you have a problem. You don't know how to use your relationship. Money will not come to you because you are a man of God. <laughs> no, no. Money will come to you because you understand the wisdom behind what you preach. Yeah. You understand the wisdom behind it. And that is the wisdom you live by. The Spirit of God will teach you His principles. That's why the Bible said concerning Moses that the people knew the acts of God or Moses knew his ways. How do you think Moses knew God's way? Because Moses spent time to know the teachings. Because the Spirit of God will always teach you. If you ask him, he will teach you. How, how do I guide my family right? How do I, how do I, Lord, I don't want my children to be wayward. I don't want my children to be stubborn. I don't want, hey, ask the Holy Spirit. He will begin to teach you and he's teaching you. He is giving you instructions and you begin to carry out those instructions. See, I'll tell you the truth. If you put the right thing in them, now how do you put the right thing in them? It comes from the Spirit of God. It's not what you think. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, not in the way you think he should go, but in the way he should go. And, and you that is close to a, a, a prophet of God, you that is close to a man of God, know how you relate with him. How do you relate with him? Open your ears and listen. Open your ears and listen. Because you see, every, if that man truly is walking with God, everything that drips from him will be wisdom. And will be a blessing. If you are around that person and all you are thinking about is his physical things, how do I get, how do I, how do I make money from this man? How do I get? If that's all you're thinking about, you will end up in poverty. That's the truth. You will end up in poverty. 
But when you serve, maybe you're serving a man of God, you know. When you serve, hold, don't serve a man of God for what money, what physical thing you can get from him. Serve for the grace of God upon his life. That is what you should desire. You see those testimonies he shares. And you know those testimonies are true. He's not lying. The truth is you can have those same testimonies. Just a matter of time. How do I get it? Serve Serve faithfully and open your ears to every wisdom that comes out of his mouth. When he said, when he tells you like, ah, I prayed last night till 3 a.m. Say, oh, okay. Mm. Go, say, Lord, teach me to pray. I want to pray too. I want to pray for that long. That's, that, that, that's wisdom. Thank you, Spirit. I, I pray. You that is hearing this message, I pray that it will be effective in your hearts and you will learn the way of the anointing. And not only minister with it, but let it become a blessing to you. I pray that your household will not curse God because you have not used the anointing properly. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is serious stuff. Have a wonderful weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.